four. That's something you will not hear either of our either of our next guests yell very often on the golf course. It's an absolute honor for Lauren and I. Uh, to interview these two folks, my good friend Adam Gary, coach WKU Lady Hilltoppers, and his superstar, the Conference USA champion, right here in the studio, Katie Craig. Thanks for coming in, y'all. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Being a golfer, it's super exciting for me because, first of all, we haven't won Lauren a football or a basketball Conference USA in a little bit, in a minute, but we've got a Conference USA champion right here, and I want to start with you. Katie, I mean, what did it feel like when that last putt went in and you knew it was yours? Um, honestly, I actually did not know I won. Um, I never like to look at the leaderboard. I just like to play golf. And it doesn't matter if it's a conference championship or if it's just qualifying. So making that last putt, of course, I was nervous. Um, but I just went over to sign my score, and then I saw water bottles in all of my teammates' hands. I was like, oh, wait, did I actually win? So it was really cool. Now just talk about just a little bit now that there was a little bit of a break before you figured out where you will be going since you are the very first Lady Hilltopper golfer to contribute and be in an NCAA tournament. I mean, that's just an amazing accomplishment. And I'll have Jackson upstairs roll on it, but just your reaction to finding out that you're pretty much going to be going home for the NCAA regional. Yeah, I mean, that was a dream come true. I knew that there is an Indiana site, which my sister was always saying, like, they'll take you to a, a close location. So I was like, oh, I'm sure I'll go to Indiana. But the fact that they sent me to UGA was so cool. And my sister plays there, too. I don't know if y'all know that. And it's her senior year, so I'll be able to play with her. That's awesome. Coach, you, you're so, and we knew this years ago before you, you were hired for this awesome job. and. You know, I said early on, you're going to do things that have never been done before. And I knew that was going to come to pass, and it has. Um, your ability to find talent is very special. And we're just so lucky to have you, a local guy at a, at a local university. But talk about this young lady. I mean, two, two wins, uh, individual titles in the season, one in the regular and the conference tournament. Yeah, what a great turnaround. Um, I love telling this story because Katie was – struggling with their game a little bit more last year and actually didn't make our top five and make the conference team. And to come back from that and just work hard, no excuses, just got better and came, came through and won Mercer earlier this spring and then won a conference title. So, um, and it's just kind of the, the person that she is. When she walks off the green, she was wondering how the team did. She wasn't even really worried about the individual title. And I kind of thought she had won, but I wasn't sure if golf stat was up to date and if it was correct. And then once we kind of figured out the scorecards, then it was, yeah, water bottles. <laughs> so it was, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I mean, just as a coach, I mean, obviously that's where you want your players to be every single year. But just being able to, like Katie, just come off of her freshman year into her sophomore year, I mean, you're only a sophomore. There's so much to look up to from this point, no matter how the tournament goes. I mean, just what is what has changed for you in the game of golf, at, like from freshman year to sophomore year? Um, I guess the love for it. Um, it was always hard to put so much work. I mean, I've been playing golf since I was two. So my whole life has been put into this and to struggle getting into college was really hard. So over Christmas break, I was like, I'm not going to go on vacation. I'm going to grind it out. Got my mental game down, and I think that was the piece of the puzzle that I really needed. So, Well, I'm definitely going to have a couple of golf questions for you, Katie, coming <laughs> up, because I'm a golfer myself, and I kind of know what we want to know, like what's in the bag. So I'll start there. I mean, what, what kind of irons are you hitting, and uh, what's your driver like? What, what's your wedge game like? And are you hitting some hybrids, that sort of thing? Yeah, I'm definitely a hybrid person. Um, not a lot of people are. I've never actually played a five iron or a four iron before. I like the nice bigger head of a hybrid. Um, irons, I used to play P790 TaylorMades, but I actually changed them in the middle of a tournament at Furman. <laughs> My mom brought me the new clubs and I was like, might as well play them. I have the TaylorMade Stealths. And then from freshman year to here, I added weight to them, so I have 105 stiff shafts. Um, and then my driver is a tailor-made stealth as well. Because I had the Sim 2 Max, but I actually fractured the face. And I think I played with a fractured face all of last semester without knowing. <laughs> so. Putter, what, what, what putter, <laughs> is it a Cameron? 
<laughs> no, it's a Odyssey triple track. Good I really like the lines on it. It's easy. It helps. And just like the game of golf, I mean, I used to play all the time with my grandpa. Obviously, it's a game you can carry with you for your entire life. You can play it, like I said, from the time you're two years old to the time you're 92 years <laughs> old. You can play it your entire life. So what is just either one of you, just kind of your advice just on the game of golf? I mean, sometimes I feel like golf is kind of getting to where like it's kind of picking up a little bit just amongst the community itself and just going out and just having fun. Yeah, no, I think with COVID golf really grew. Um, so more jobs are probably working remotely. Um, people have a little bit more free time and enjoy being outside. So I'm, I'm definitely seeing a boom in golf on the lesson side of it. And um, everyone's wanting to kind of get involved and it's a good way for kids to, to get involved and it's a game you can play your whole life. So if I had to, to kind of make a recommendation for it and to, to enjoy it, it's, it's really just like Katie did over the break is when she was working with her sports psychologist. It's keeping everything in, in expectations and realistic. I don't think a lot of people even realize that the PGA Tour is about 50-50 from eight feet putting. So everyone expects to make all their putts and then the PGA Tour they average a par on a par three that's a length of about 160 yards. So anything above 160, um, they start to make bogeys. But then you talk to normal golfers and they, they expect every shot to go perfect and everything to go their way. So I think you have to, to kind of take it as, as it comes and to, to be patient and, and to be realistic with it and not be too hard on yourself and, and know it is just a game and enjoy it. But yeah, I don't know what Katie has to add. Um, I mean, I agree everything. I really think golf boomed once COVID hit. I mean, it's the ability to go outside and play alone if you had to. And I think it's grown in popularity. Like people are learning about Pinehurst and all these cool resort, resort courses and it's getting older and younger people together. Like I play with my grandpa a lot. So I think that's a cool way to bond. Absolutely a cool way to bond. I had to learn by myself. Nobody really played in my family. Uh, last question, we never have enough time on the show, but uh, you know, the great news that, that Lauren was alluded to, uh, had alluded to earlier about you getting to play a course you're familiar with. Uh, many times you've got to tee it up there. I love the uh, sibling connection as well. But, Coach, how important is this for young Craig to be able to be on a track that she's familiar with? Yeah, this was best case scenario for us. I mean, we would have been happy with any site that, that we received, but, but to be able to go close to home and be at the same site with her sister so her parents don't have to split up and go to two different places and also be at a golf course where she's familiar and played tournaments before. Actually, we've played the last two years at their individual tournament for the University of Georgia. So it's nice to have local knowledge. It's nice to have friends and family there to support you. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we, we couldn't ask for anything better. We're, we're really excited and looking forward to getting down there. And just for me, just what are those like last second preps for you? Obviously, it's coming up really soon. So what are those last second preps that you want to get in before hitting the course? Um, definitely short game. I really want to dial down my approach shots on par fives because I'm pretty sure I can't go for any of them on two. Maybe maybe one of them for much longer. So like my 40 to 90 yards, I really want to just dial down. Putting, um, it's bent grass, so I've been playing a bowling green every day. It's very similar. And then tee shots there aren't that bad. It's a wider. I think approach shots is where you really got to be um, exact. So I've been working on that. Uh, I guess we got to wrap it up. Uh, daggone it. What, what golf ball do you, what, you have a certain golf ball that you're playing? I play a Callaway Chrome Soft. I like it. She's a birdie hunter <laughs> and on a quest for a national championship bid unbelievable stuff katie craig very much a pleasure adam gary always a pleasure and as far as i'm concerned on golf learn the basics from somebody like coach adam gary and then just get out there and don't, don't take it too serious that's right you're not going on tour <laughs> just face it we'll be right back with more sports connection after the break wbkf